Welcome back to the Seaboard Central, everyone. In today's video, we're gonna talk all about dynamic brakes. So if you haven't seen the previous video on diesel locomotive basics, I'd invite you to go back and look at that video and then come back and watch this one on dynamic brakes. So in the last video, I may have got something incorrect about dynamic braking. So here, at, thanks to Greg of Fishplate Films YouTube channel, who is a fellow railroader from the land down under, have some updated information on dynamic braking. Instead of altering the polarity, as I said in the last video, the traction motors on the engine are essentially turned into generators by cutting the power to them. As the wheels rotate, the traction motors produce voltage, which in turn is fed into heater banks. They end up drawing heaps of current, which is used to help slow down the traction motors to aid in braking the train. Dynamic brakes can produce a lot of energy and in the future will be used to recharge battery operated locomotives that are consisted with traditional units. On traditional units, all this heat and energy is expelled into the atmosphere through the grates and the fans on top and sides of the locomotive. Greg, if you're watching this video, I hope I got all that right and you're smiling and eating a Vegemite sandwich. Cheers, my friend. If you haven't seen his channel, be sure to check it out at Fish Plate Films. He's got a great channel on YouTube. So dynamic brakes have been around for a long time. They started showing up on first generation units. In each generation, they've improved. Here we see two second generation SD40-2s equipped with extended range dynamic braking coming in and bringing the movement to a stop. So early dynamic brakes, such as found on this old GP30 right here, were called standard dynamic brakes, and they worked at speeds above 25 and 30 miles per hour, but when you got slower, they became less effective to the point where they weren't really doing anything at all. So a lot of railroads opted not to even have dynamic brakes on their units. So you look at this former Canadian National um, GP40-2 wide cab locomotives that's lacking a dynamic brake. And you can correct me if I'm wrong, but I do believe those units were purchased for lightweight branch uh, line work that was located in the prairies of Alberta, where the trackage was fairly flat, not a lot of steep grades. And so they just didn't really warrant spending the extra money to include dynamic brakes on their locomotives. Another example of not needing dynamic brakes are yard units, such as this MP15 and the two GP15s here. Uh, it wouldn't be necessary to have the dynamics in the yard because you're keeping the speed slow, so why have the extra expense for dynamic brakes when you don't need it? Now, these former Southern Railway Hot Hood GP38s all have dynamic brakes, and that's because the Southern has a lot of territory where we have a lot of grades and I'll show you one example on my line. So here's one of my old timetables from 2012. You can see it's pretty worn. I am uh, part of the Piedmont division, and my district is the uh, Greenville district. And this uh, covers Inman Yard in Atlanta, which is our home terminal, all the way up to Greenville, which is our away from home terminal. So, you can see this uh, is the former part of the Atlanta to Washington, D.C. Southern Railway line, which includes a lot of double track, uh, track one and track two. There's no sidings on this uh, line. Now, today, 
And for the last few years, I've been operating a uh, road switcher local out of Shambly, Georgia, which uh, gathers cars out of a doorway yard near Ray and uh, takes cars up to Norcross in Carolina and works industries between Norcross and Duluth. And then I come back and tie up at Shambly. Now on this particular territory, we do have one major grade that's the top of the mountain is at Mount Airy and it goes all the way down to the state line between Georgia and South Carolina at Kiowee. This is 17 miles, a 17 mile grade that's over 1%. So you definitely need dynamic brakes. Now in general electric units, the dynamic brakes are located here. And uh, if they're used real heavily, these are often get red hot behind these grates. And that tells me, brings me to a story I had. Years ago, I was operating a mainline train on a trip between Atlanta and Greenville, South Carolina. I had uh, some former Conrail Dash 840 CWs in the lead and um, been using the dynamic brakes full all the way down the mountain between Mount Airy and Kiwi. And when I got to the bottom, the dynamic brakes were so hot, I heard a loud boom and the lead unit lost its dynamic brakes. It was crazy. And that happens in the real world. So on newer units such as this ES44AC, and they have uh, even stronger dynamic brakes where that Dash 9 I was just showing you had two grates, these have three. And these dynamic brakes on uh, these engines on all the AC units that I've ran are so strong, they will stand you on your head. And uh, they would have really come in handy on that trip that I had with those old Conrail units. Probably would have held the train without having to resort to the uh, using air brakes. So we're back in the uh, 1970s and before, dynamic brakes were pretty much an option. They're standard today. So besides slowing a train down and keeping the train under control, coming down mountainous territory or bringing a train to a stop, what other purpose would dynamic brakes be used for? And it just comes down to fuel savings. If the dynamic brakes uh, will hold the train without having to resort to using the air brakes on the rail cars, you're going to end up saving fuel and also the wear and tear of the, of the freight cars. Every time you have to apply the air brakes to the cars, of course, it's uh, using those brake shoes against the rolling stock wheels the dynamic brakes aren't putting any brake shoes against the wheels so now you're starting to see engines with dynamic brakes showing up on territories where earlier it was something that they didn't even opt for. So it comes down to better train handling, fuel conservation, and improved performance. So I hope you've enjoyed this video on dynamic brakes and if you learned something, if you did, be sure to leave a comment and a like below. Be sure to tune in next week for some more information about the prototype and the Seaboard Central. Until then, thanks for watching everyone and happy model railroading.